Hi, Bernhard. Hi, Carsten. <laughs> another day, another series, right? Right. So now we are doing a hybrid workload series about a uh, full workload that's running on Azure Stick HCI. And it's Azure Virtual Desktop. Yeah. So in, in the first part, we do a bit uh, an overview. What is mm -hmm. AVD? Uh, and... Um, some important information, but uh, don't be scared. We will do a lot of demos on screen. Only the first <laughs> video is a bit, is a bit what's about and how you, <laughs> some some background information. So and uh, Bernard prepared a slide deck for that, but maybe we should say some words about us first, right, Bernard? Yep. Who are um, you? What are you um, doing? My name is Bernard Frank. Um, I'm based out of Germany. I work for Microsoft in the Azure Fast Track team. Um, my goal is to help customers with their Azure uh, related projects. Um, and my specialities is Azure Stack HCI and also Azure Virtual Desktop. And uh, this series brings uh, both worlds together. Uh, and I'm trying to share some knowledge with you. What about you, Carl? Yeah. My name is Carsten Rachfall. Um, I'm a Microsoft MVP for Cloud and Data Center Management. Uh, I always call this group the on-prem group, and I'm also an Azure MVP. So I do uh, a lot of Azure Stack HCI installations, storage spaces direct installations, and Hyper-V, and also train uh, this stuff um, Yes, train people to learn about this stuff. And I'm also based in German, so bear with us. We decided to do this series in English, but there will be some hiccups in the language. Uh, we are better in German than in English, but I think so the audience is a bit broader. If we do if we would do it in Germany, it's 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 not so useful for many people and and we learned with our first series that there is a lot of uh, interest out there uh, uh, from a lot of countries right bernard mm, maybe you yeah. refer to the series uh, that's have true nice i, I there, have right? yeah yes i have the link in the slide deck uh, so maybe bring up this one so we did a previous series to this one so uh, if you happen not to have seen it before this is the one right so where we have set up the infrastructure right from the bare metal so if you're interested in what kind of hardware we were using or we are using um, have a look at that YouTube link. Uh, it's the, containing the full list uh, for setting up the cluster that you see here on that picture. Yeah, so I have to add, of course, we have two times the videos online on mm -hmm. the uh, channel of the Azure Fast Track team. Uh, that's the link here. And I also have the videos online on my YouTube link. So if you either use this link or search for Carsten Rachfall YouTube, and you will find the series with some other webinars and uh, stuff around uh, the topics we are, um, yeah, we are handling here. So go okay. on, Bernard, this is your... <laughs> Video. <laughs> okay, no, no worries. Uh, so first of all, because we might, you know, uh, not everyone watching this might have a full picture of Azure Virtual Desktop or might have used it in Azure before. So I'll give you a brief introduction of Azure Virtual Desktop, what it's been using for and what's, uh, what's, what the idea is, right? So usually, um, Azure Virtual Desktop is a solution for remote desktop workers, right? For a, it's a VDI platform, uh, a, a virtualized desktop platform, uh, hosted or meant to run in the cloud, providing services, desktops to everyone, right? And there are some things that you know that you might be familiar from your own terminal server farm that you are running, um, no matter which technology that you are using. Right. Um, so I'll talk a little bit ab about the different components. So if you would use Azure Virtual Desktop, you have an Azure subscription. You also have the Microsoft data centers, the Microsoft infrastructure, right? So the cloud, the data centers all over the world, which provide you Hyper-V servers, storage and networking, right? So that's all managed by Microsoft. Then there is something in a terminal server farm that usually you would need to set up, which is, you know, you need to take care about the load balancing. You need to take care about, you know, the gateways, the web access uh, to the desktops. Uh, and these are, you know, usually server roles uh, sitting on a Windows server, for example, if you would use RDS or uh, different 
server technologies, if you would use different technologies, right? In AVD, that's taken care of by Microsoft, right? So you are using it, uh, but you don't update it. You don't, you know, sort of manage it. You don't install it. So that's, you know, the benefit of it because you don't have to care about it. But there are things that you need to care, take care about, which are the desktops themselves, right? So um, the virtual machines hosting the operating system, you decide which operating system to choose, right? So it could be a Windows Server operating system with a GUI interface there with your server-like applications on there or you know what you, whatever you are familiar with. Or um, you could use a Windows client operating system to be hosted for either single users, like in a VDI scenario, one-to-one -one mapping, right? Or, you know, using a desktop that is shared amongst a lot of users, like a pooled scenario, right? Um, and therefore we have that Windows uh, multi-session image, right? Um, which is quite interesting in order to, um, to do a, a good economy of scale, to make better use of the hardware. This is something that you need to take care about. And it's running in your subscription, right? In your, in your Azure subscription. And then you need to take care of a lot of other things, right? So um, how is that image updated? Uh, how do I get the application into the desktop? Um, you know, what size of VM do I use in order to have a good performance for the user? And yada, 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 yeah. So that's the things that you still care about as an uh, Azure Virtual Desktop administrator, right? Um, there are some other things that I don't want to, you know, talk too much in detail um, about. However, you know, be sure that you you probably have some connection, some private connection from Azure where your desktops are to on-premise where maybe, you know, some other resources are. Uh, that you need to talk to, right? Because you do have a client-server application where the client runs in Azure and the server runs um, on-premise. Maybe not an ideal perspective from a latency thing, right? So you would usually try to put these things together in order to have the best performance. But yeah, there might be cases where you still have some, you know, uh, hybrid networking. Yeah, but to be clear, Bernard, mm -hmm. everything of this is running in Azure. So it's right. a cloud-based so solution, except the clients. Uh, so the, the, yes. the computer where you access the remote desk. Yes. That is not right. in the cloud, that's uh, on your desktop. But the rest Correct. is in the cloud. And most Correct. of it is cared about from Microsoft. So you don't have mm -hmm. to care about the Azure Virtual Desktop Services. Microsoft does that for you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. So the client could be sitting anywhere, right? So in uh, having an internet access, for example, or even it's possible via uh, a private network would also be possible to connect to your desktops. But usually, you know, you um, the client is, you know, different device. It could be a Mac, it could be an Android phone, it could be a Windows computer um, trying to access or accessing the desktop, which is hosted mm -hmm. in your subscription in any data center in Azure where you, where you want it to, right? Mm -hmm. However, right? So with Azure Stack HCI, things change, right? Um, because not everything fits or would be ideal to be hosted in Azure, right? So let's think about it. Basically, you know, there are still people out there that have bad internet connection, right? So, so then it's no use to put the desktop in Azure if you, you know, if you have a very thin and very high latent network to it. Right, so you may want still to host close to the users on premise, mm -hmm. or um, you might still be, you know, have data sovereignty issues where you say, Hey, um, I might use the desktop in Azure, but my database with all the data, I don't allow it to be run in data in, in Azure, right? It needs to be on premise by law, sort of, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, you have that, you know separated network and that might not be ideal as well right because you do a lot of database calls and that would always travel over the network mm. so you want to have things sitting together right and for these scenarios it would be ideal to have a solution where you can host the whole solution on premise and that's now possible with azure stack hci 
Yeah, Bernard, uh, can I add something here? Because mm -hmm. these are the two typical scenarios uh, that a Microsoft employee thinks of when, <laughs> for reasons why you don't put something in Azure, right? Yeah. And yeah. I know you are from the Azure Fast Track team, so of course you know these reasons, but there are maybe some other advantages uh, mm -hmm. that we will uh, see. For example, um, Azure is a all-purpose cloud, so uh, mm -hmm. you, you can do a anything there, but it's not optimized for small small things like, let's say, performance, uh, performance of disks. You can have very performant disks, but they are very mm -hmm. expensive. Mm -hmm. On premises, you can uh, deliver high performance and it's not so expensive and mm -hmm. you have low latency. So there are maybe other reasons why you want to have uh, mm -hmm. Azure Virtual Desktop based VMs or services in Azure Stack HCI. Yeah. yeah, let me let me add. Maybe, is one, maybe cost oh, is one. Do yeah. you have others? Yeah, it might be, you know, like uh, if you have graphic intensive workloads, right? So the Good users one. are designing yeah. stuff, right? And they need to have a GPU in order to have a good performance, right? And you want to make use of it, but your closest Azure data center doesn't provide you with uh, GPUs. That's still in that's still the case, right? Uh, in a lot of areas. And uh, then you can think of, you know, building your hardware with um, GPU-based graphic cards in it and provide these functionality on-premise um, close to the user. Uh, that might be a use case as well, right? Um, yeah, and that's, you know, and but, you know, you can still have the best of both worlds. I mean, mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be, you know, one or the other. It could be a combination of both because, you know, you could still, you know, for special use cases, uh, use HCI and for the generic use cases you could or for the mass use cases or for the high scale down, scale up, you could still use uh, Azure, for example, uh, mm -hmm. because, you know, the management for AVD is mostly done on Azure, right? Um, there are some things that you still need to do on HCI itself as an admin there, uh, a lot of things still, but you know, over the time when this solution uh, matures, uh, you will be seeing a lot of stuff uh, moving moving to Azure as well from a management yeah, and, perspective. And you said a very important point. Uh, we are now in August 2023. Mm -hmm. uh, AVD or Azure Virtual Desktop uh, for Azure Stack HCI is still in preview. So if you watch this series later, there will be a lot of change depending on when you, when you watch yeah. it. Bernard yeah. and I, we know that, but we, we thought still provide you with information how you can set up Azure, uh, Azure Virtual Desktop on premises because it's a very promising technology. And um, there's always change in Azure. So there's maybe not, not ever the right time to do a series mm -hmm. that will last for years. Yeah? Yeah. So to start with the stuff, this is a point. Yeah. So, um, and we also will, you know, we'll do what in the series. Uh, either we'll, you know, kick out the uh, the stuff that is obsolete, or we will add add later on the stuff that is, you know, uh, when it's time to talk about, right? But uh, okay. first of all, for this series, we'll try to do that stuff that won't change uh, soon, right? So that um, it's still worth watching, right? Don't you don't be afraid of the things or the knowledge that you gain from this series will be um, will be in vain, you know, or, or or soon be obsolete. So that's that shouldn't be the case, right? Okay, so you know that's still uh, you know what the idea of that slide is that nevertheless, if you have you know the desktop now sitting in Azure or now on Azure, Azure Stack HCI, the idea of AVD is still to have a centralized management from the Azure portal. Mm -hmm. um, it's not fully implemented yet. There are still some things of improvement as we uh, said before, and some things will change. Um, but you know, in um, uh, over the time, um, that's the idea to have everything, you know, uh, or at least most of the session, uh, most of the stuff to be centralized managed in Azure. For example, yeah. what already works is the monitoring piece, right? So monitoring 
is using the same portal, the same uh, single pan of glass approach, um, you would be able to see the monitoring data of your desktops, you know, how much time the user takes, for example, to log on. Um, um, in both ways, uh, it, it would be the same, uh, the same uh, user experience, right? Okay, um, maybe let's, you know, let's try to keep it to an end for that session and try to, you know, um, go into um, production. But there is one thing for the series, um, basically, for using or for implementing Azure Virtual Desktop on Azure Stack HCI, there are two ways to do it right now. So. You will probably have seen the right-hand side, uh, the right way, uh, or the the, the the thing on the right, which is the official documentation, where um, you are seeing a lot of stuff that tries to automate the things. However, it has also some prerequisites, and these prerequisites will change um, relatively soon. So we decided to do the left-hand side of way, which is the more manual approach. Right. Maybe Can I add something on, here? Yeah. I know you are you are a bit cautious here because you are from <laughs> Microsoft. I'm I'm not so cautious. Only <laughs> what I'm risking is my MVP award. <laughs> so uh, the the right side is with the Azure Resource Bridge, and mm -hmm. uh, we we use the Azure Resource Bridge, and it's it's in preview. So mm -hmm. there are days you can deploy it with Azure the Resource Bridge or the Azure Resource Bridge, and there are days that that where you will have some problems mm -hmm. and uh, we have some information that that change is coming here so it will be th there will be a lot of change so we decided to take the manual way it will mm -hmm. be valid also with a new resource bridge or in a year or in two years or whatever maybe so the manual part uh, is also helpful that you understand what you are doing if you mm -hmm. do the automatic way, a lot of stuff is automatically downloaded and uh, mm -hmm. we want to give you some more information here and some more freedom, right, Bernard? Yeah, so, you know, the, the, the beauty of the manual approach is you would understand, you know, the basic components of ABD on HCI, you know, what needs to be done or what the automated way does anyway, right? Um, and you can, you know, you fully understand in case there goes anything wrong, you would be better able to, uh, to to troubleshoot the whole situ yeah. uh, solution, right? So right-hand side will be coming, will be updated. Left-hand side should be there for quite a while. So uh, depending on, you know, whatever choice you like, um, choose either way. Um, however, for the next part of the series, we will concentrate on the left-hand side. And as soon as the automated way is stable enough, um, and then we'll hopefully provide another uh, solution. So that should be, it um, for the slide deck. And now I wanna just give you a short introduction of what the manual way would look like um, because we will then you know, do a separate video um, on the individual steps. Um, I don't wanna go into much detail here, but uh, these steps are you know, prescribed on my GitHub repository. Um, they also contain some code pieces Right, there are some prerequisites we already have, which is a valid HCI cluster, which is registered with uh, Carson's Azure subscription. We also do have um, Azure Active Directory. We also do have a classic AD, a classic domain, um, which is synced with Azure Active Directory. Um, that's a prerequisite. And the first video, will be about you know the downloading of the image from the Azure Marketplace, right? Because we want to host a Windows 11 multi-session image on our Azure Stack HCI. And the way where we get it is from the Azure Marketplace. And this is the next video, okay? So see you in the next video, right? <laughs>